Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. Okay, so before I jump into the actual breakdown for the episode 7 promo, I want to discuss something that I see making the rounds. I I don't know if anyone said it, but I know I mentioned it in my live stream for episode 6 um, just a few days ago on Sunday. Check the link down below in the description and go watch it. But basically, in that live stream, I mentioned how it makes literally no sense for Laris the Clubfoot to just willingly kill his brother and his father like that. Like, from what we've seen, the interactions with uh, Lionel and, and, and Harwin and, and Laris, it, it's been pretty familial. Like... There's there's really no reason for him to hate his dad. There has to be some reason why he's willing to hire the Firefly men and go and burn Harrenhal. Now, if you read Fire and Blood, you'll know at the very end of the Dance of the Dragons, basically, you know, that chapter that chronicles the events of, basically, the Blacks versus the Greens, or Aegon II versus Rhaenyra, or Alicent versus Rhaenyra, or the Princess versus the Queen, or the Queen versus the Queen Regent, right? Ah, all that aside, when you get to the very end of it, you find out that Laris, his motivation to this day this day being around 300 AC, uh, around that's around the year of the uh, most current version of this story in A Song of Ice and Fire. To that day, right, 300 years after Aegon conquered Westeros, 172 years after these events of the Dance of the Dragons, right, we don't really know what Larys' motivation is. So, Ryan Condo, Miguel Sapochnik, Sarah Hess, Charmaine de Grotte, everybody who's responsible for writing this season knows that, so they have to spice it up a bit, right? So, in, literally, in a live, like, thought process that I had in my video, I'm like, okay, who do we know that is a similar situation where there's a father and two brothers and they're sworn to a higher-up house in Westeros? Clegane Bowl. It's very easy. Sandor's face in the books, I don't know exactly how this happens on the TV show. I think it's very similar, right? But in the books, uh, Sandor takes one of his brother Gregor's toys and plays with it, right? You would think, uh, you know, as a normal rational person, that's not a big deal. Why? Who cares, right? Let him play with your toys, right? You have to teach your kids to share stuff. But... These are Cleganes. These are hounds. So when, when Gregor finds out that Sandor played with his toy, he takes his face and mashes it into a brazier. Clegane, Sandor, right, the hound, is burned for the rest of his life, and he learns, don't play with Gregor's toys. So, this is why Sandor hates Gregor. He hates him with a passion. And also, there's rumors that uh, Gregor may have potentially not only, you know, did that to Sandor, burned his face on a brazier, right, he confirmed it, that, but he also may have actually killed Clegane's father and sister, right? So, Lord Clegane of House Clegane, loyal to House Lannister, dies mysteriously, and so does their little sister. So, it's quite possible that Gregor is responsible for that. So this is why Clegane Bowl has yet to happen in the books, happened on the TV show, and, like, you know, it's it's a thing. It's a sibling rivalry. It's a very common, repeated element in this story. So if that's the case, this guy, right, Harwin, is known as freaking Breakbones. He's the strongest man in the Seven Kingdoms. He probably has a bit of a rage issue. I thought maybe for the TV show he wasn't actually born with the clubfoot, but instead was hobbled by his brother, break bones and that was sort of covered up by their father and this is why clubfoot willingly uh you know destroys the hell out of them and sends his firefly men to go and kill them if you agree with this theory let me know down below in the uh comment section now that i have your attention please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video like goal is gonna be 420 <laughs> get it and then also <laughs> uh make make sure you subscribe and have those notifications turned like all the way on lot 2 and 11 so that way you'll get notified every single time i drop a video throughout the wait for the next house of the dragon episode and remember we've only got four Four episodes less season two will not be out next year so do yourself a favor if you enjoy my content go ahead and subscribe i am so so close to reaching 100,000 here on youtube please help me reach that goal and basically what that'll do is help defeat youtube from uh shadow banning and delisting my channels whereas when you search house of the dragon i've been making content for two years i know my videos are not the best but if you've been making content for two years on youtube your videos should show up in their algorithm if they don't you're being delisted you're being shadow banned so i ask anybody watching this right now who's a fan of my channel help me defeat that and combat it by subscribing now i mention this in every video but it's actually really important one of my one of my episode breakdowns my my episode 5 breakdown right it's got 23,000 views 2,000 likes here on YouTube it was literally copyright striked <laughs> HBO for some reason demonetized that video entirely and I made a couple hundred dollars from it so now that the video has been copyright striked HBO now gets all of the monetization they had Okay, so they had a lot to do with the video, right, by making this show, but this is what YouTube is. We're supposed to 
upload reviews of it here. On, I don't know why they claim that video. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting it. I've obviously requested uh, for them to, you know, like check that again because I, I've been making YouTube videos on, on Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon for a long time. So I'm not sure why that got copyright strike, but that brings me into saying this is why Patreon, this is why I've been, I've been, I've been uploading exclusive content to there. And this is ultimately what's going to happen is every single video that I upload here to YouTube is going to be demonetized. So I don't have to worry about copyright strikes or any of that. And anybody who wants like full out exclusive content, go check out my Patreon. So thank you to every single person who's joined there. I'm showing you a list of my Patreon producers right now. Thank you to every single person who's already joined and you watching this, please consider joining because YouTube is is probably going to continue to do this and i really don't know why because i don't even talk shit about this show like it's literally my favorite thing ever it's this is just insane but anyway let's get into the actual meat of this video okay so in the very first nine seconds of this trailer we get literally the king the queen lanor rainiera we get everybody saluting lena and her casket has been carved and what's remaining of her from when Vagar burned her from the last episode is being pushed into the sea. So she gets a traditional Targaryen and a traditional Valarion funeral. And there's not really an instance of, um, of Valarion funeral. Like they, it is mentioned they bury their dead at sea. But for instance, at the very end of the story, when Corlys the Sea Snake dies, not really a spoiler. Every single person who's involved in this story is going to die at some point before Game of Thrones because this is, you know, 173 years before the birth of Daenerys, right? So all that besides the point, but Corlys gets buried in a, in a similar way, right? So they put him on his ship, the Sea Snake, float him out to sea, and supposedly uh, Cannibal flew over and gave him one last salute, but he's buried out at sea. So this is what's happening to Lena in the first nine seconds of this, this trailer, and we get Corlys, who's clearly distraught. He just lost his daughter, but he's saying, what is this brief mortal life if not the pursuit of legacy? And that's something that is a heavy thematic element in this show. You are not, like, this is how I take it, rather. You, the individual, do not mean so much because your life is brief and it's short, but what you're supposed to do in that brief and short life is make sure your legacy continues. This is something that Tywin freaking Lannister tried to instill into all of his children. So this is something that Corlys, hey, hey guess what? The Also, the richest man in the Seven Kingdoms knows that like after he dies, it doesn't, his life is, is meaningless. He needs to make sure he secures his legacy. And that's what is going to be the heavy theme for the last couple of episodes of this season. It's like everybody's life is short. People are going to start dying left and right in these last few episodes. As we saw, you know, in episode six with Lena, what is your purpose? Are you making sure that you ensure your legacy for the future? Are you providing heirs for the kingdom? Are you continuing the bloodline or are you just wasting your time and wasting your life? And that's probably what's going to, you know, ultimately motivate and influence the decisions that are made after, uh, you know, we have that famous incident where we see in this trailer later on, right? The Vagar is getting stolen, right? So we see uh, Reyna and Bela and they're sleeping with, it looks like Jacaris right um they do get betrothed to each other right so the dragon twins um are looking out of the window and they see Vagar's being stolen so they go and wake Jacaris. uh so now how that goes down in the books and i don't even have to say spoiler anymore but i'll, I'll just say it for fun right um how that happens in the book is basically aemon waits till everybody's asleep and goes out and mounts Vagar. and you got to realize that Vagar is the biggest most badass dragon in the land and also has recently lost his rider so regardless of what you want to say about aemon stealing a dragon from the blacks like the greens stealing from the blacks it still requires an insane insane amount of bravery so he ends up doing this he mounts Vagar successfully Vagar becomes his mount but it looks as though the kids get involved in the scrap like the dragon twins have bloodied and blackened eyes and it looks like Aemon starts pummeling uh you know Lucerius and then ultimate Luc Lucerius uh, is going to have his father's dagger on him and is probably going to cut his eye out now here's the thing here's the thing Lucerus may not actually take Aemon's eye with the cat's paw dagger because it looks like the cat's paw dagger is on the king. So if 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 it if it does happen, the only way that I could think it's happened is the king gifts the dagger to Lucerus. Uh, the king, you know, probably does this because maybe it's mentioned that Jace will eventually carry Blackfire because he's the Prince of Dragonstone. He's technically next in line for the Iron Throne after his mother Rhaenyra. So maybe in order to comfort Lucerus, the king gives him his dagger, and then you know obviously. Uh, Luke uses that dagger to take out Aemon's eye and then the king takes it back because we see at the very end of this trailer Alicent grabs that dagger and charges towards Rhaenyra we see King's Guardman steps in right and then we also see that Alicent ends up 
cutting Rainier because we see blood dropping in slow motion to the ground. So, I think that that's the only way for the cat's ball dagger to be used to take out um, Eamon's eye. It just it just would make the most sense. And I actually have like a bit of a theory. I can't even call it a theory. It's just an idea that, you know, Dark Sisters used to kill Eamon in Fire and Blood. What if uh, it's a combination, right? So we see Eamon, um, or sorry, we see Damon and Lena riding in the last episode. And guess what? Damon doesn't have his chains on. <laughs> he doesn't have the whips, uh, or sorry, the saddle in his hand to, you know, control his dragon. So he basically says, look at me, mom. It's like the thing we all used to do on our bike. Like, no hands. Look, no hands, baby. Look, You know what I mean? So that's 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 potential foreshadowing right to win damon fights Eamon. uh it's probably going to be damon's common theme is that he's such a badass rider and he's been riding his dragon for so long he doesn't need his chains to attach him to his saddle and that's just you know like what this show is famous for kicking book elements up to a 10 still remaining in canon and making it even better for this visual medium known as a tv show right so this is an adaptation you want to remain as faithful as possible but also develop the work mature turning into something new but still Still keeping the same thematic elements and the same theme of the books because ultimately this is this is what people want to see who have read Fire and Blood like myself. I want to see a TV show version of what I read. So what I was getting at in that massive side tangent is what if Damon uses the cat's paw dagger to actually uh, stab out Eamon's eye but then Dark Sister to land. So when he jumps off his dragon when Caraxes is above Vagar, he uses Dark Sister to uh, land and then cat's paw to do the deed, right? So he's going to have to stick the landing he'll use the sword or the knife to stab into vagar and then proceed to stab out Eamon's eye i don't know just an idea let me know what you think down below in the comment section right all right now i know this is my over analysis coming in but it's kind of like when you watch the trailer the teaser trailer for uh you know episode seven when you watch it at point 25 the speed it's there's a long shot of lane's casket hitting the bottom of the ocean floor now that i i think that's like foreshadowing for what's going to happen to Vagar. Like, we know Vagar is going to end up on the bottom of the ocean just like her initial rider. Like, Vagar's been ridden by other creatures, but the fact that, that Vagar not only burns Lena, even though Damon will probably, you know, obviously hate Vagar a little bit for that, it's going to be probably part of his character development to understand that this is why Vagar did this, right? But then also the fight at the end, you know, the, the battle above uh, the God's Eye. Like, that's going to have. I don't know. I mean, you all let me know what you think. You think Lena's casket hitting the bottom of the ocean floor is symbolism for how Vagar's going to eventually die by Damon and Caraxes? Because Caraxes, remember, swims to shore and uh, Damon's body's never found. So then we get a shot of Allison in the tr uh, on her making her way back from high tide and driftmark and Lena's funeral, right? So she's at sea. Um, right before she leaves, we have this famous moment. This was released in the very first teaser for this show of Allison and Rainier sort of squaring off like Cole is present in this scene and this is probably one of the final moments they exchange words with each other before the dance jumps off like obviously there's going to be probably a few more conversations between them but these will be the 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 straw that broke the camel's back so to speak whatever the two of them say in this scene is going to be amazing I'm probably going to replay it a thousand times and the dialogue that's used is going to be fuel for like a thousand memes on the internet it's going to be intense insane to watch and i just can't wait to see how much shit is talked like these bitches do not care at this point like you know rainier's established herself on dragonstone she's the princess who's going to become the queen and allison keeps telling her kid Aegon jerking it in the window you're gonna be king so this is all coming up to a head and i, I this is probably gonna be one of my favorite scenes in the show and at about 20 seconds in the teaser, we get a voiceover of, of Rhaenyra, not verbatim, but basically saying everything, uh, you know, that House Targaryen has is due to fire. Fire has crazy properties, and somebody has the knife and is holding it over a brazier. This is after Alicent has attacked Rhaenyra, and most likely what's going on is the knife is uh, probably being inspected um, by Viserys when having a conversation with Alicent, when Alicent is, like, probably being called out for a shit. Rhaenyra says, this is the highest of treason. Now they see you for who you are. So it's going to be really intense to watch Allison suffer no consequences for doing this. Like, it's kind of like Robert Baratheon in the main books being entangled with the Lannisters. He tells Ned, like, 
uh, you know, Ned tells him, like, why don't you just get rid of her, basically? Like, why don't you, why don't you get rid of Cersei and get a new wife? And, like, Ned's like, you know, you're the king. Like, basically, what you say goes. He doesn't say, like, get a new wife. That'd be out of Ned, out of character for Ned. But that's kind of what he's insinuating. Like, Robert, you're the king. And uh, Robert checks him by saying, dude, you don't sleep with the Lannister. Like, like you don't understand how crazy these people are. So that's probably why Viserys um, refuses to sort of uh, reprimand Alicent for talking to her the way she the way she does in front of all of you know his peasants like he's already a weak amiable king with a gentle easygoing nature and she's taking advantage of that literally in front of the worst people possible his court right so i don't think she's going to suffer anything for charging at rainier with a knife but it's going to make rainier obviously hate full-on hater like as it, as if she already doesn't and then also like later on when the war starts off this will be the defining moment of like no there's no going back from this point forward i can't wait to watch this episode it's gonna be amazing and just to sort of wrap this video up some of the uh more interesting shots so at about 32 seconds we get damon choking out the servant dude uh on the stairs and i actually mentioned this in the um the video i did before the last well i guess it was a uh, saturday's video where i mentioned damon's probably involved with uh the death of lanor and carl corey supposedly kills him in a duel and then we also get a shot of i believe it's at about 33 seconds so right after that shot of damon choking the dude out of uh someone a hooded figure at hull which um it, it could be the shipyard at hull if i'm not mistaken um which is right near driftmark and high tide so this is uh, where house core uh house corliss <laughs> pretty much where house valarion has their seat right so hull um is a town is a thriving shipping port and, and, and it looks as though this cloaked individual is probably carl Corey waiting to escape the narrow sea and then obviously damon's probably going to show up and put a stop to that and then another interesting shot we get um is of larry's and that's at 41 seconds and it looks like you know at some point in the trailer I can't remember the exact timestamp, but um, it looks like Sir Otto disciplines Aegon. He lifts him up off the ground and lets him know, like, dude, it may actually be Aemon. It may actually be Aemon. But the shot that I'm referring to at 41 seconds is Laris looking at Alicent, who's talking to her father and a couple of other House Hightower men. And uh, Otto already has the hand of the king pinned back on. So Alicent got what she want, and Laris is sort of reminding her, you still owe me that payment. Like, I killed my daddy and my brother. You still owe me some form of reward. He's likely going to hold this over her head to get her to agree to more atrocities when the war starts. Okay, so I thought it was kind of embarrassing that I didn't know if that was Aegon or Aemon. I went back and watched. It's definitely Aemon, and Sir Otto looks like he's confronting him after he mounts Vagar. And I think when he tries to rough up Aemon for doing this, like, Otto's the discipline because, you know, his grandsons are jacking off in windows, hasn't claimed a dragon yet, and just all out not representing good for House Hightower, right? So I think what's going to happen is because we also have another shot of Vagar opening her mouth and burning, uh, blowing, you know, Jakarasing, right? Maybe she does this to threaten Sir Otto to get her to drop Aemon. And that'd be awesome because that would power check Otto. Like, dude, you think you're their grandpa and you can discipline them, but they have dragons. Watch out for dragons. You're going to get burned, Otto, you burnt. Uh, he doesn't actually get burned in the books, but I'm saying if he continues to mess with Aemon, he probably will. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. Please, if you really, really enjoy my content and you want to help me like just completely being attacked from youtube because i'm not only being delisted in shadow band I'm, I'm getting copyright strategy for for no reason right consider joining my patreon you can join it for as little as one dollar and i've already uploaded several exclusives there for this month and i'm going to continue uploading there every couple of days um but thank you for watching if you can't do any of that a super special shout out to every single member of my patreon family but if you can't do any of that watching my videos here on youtube clicking a like, uh, making sure you're subscribed and turn those notifications on. They do help. So thank you so, so much for watching. Oh.